Hey everyone, this is Scott from CertMedia.com, and in this video, I'll be covering ASIC Cleanup version 1.3.62. I'm also going to be giving my general thoughts and opinions on this plugin as we go along. So, asset, asset cleanup and asset optimization is essentially when you have a very large, complicated website, you use another plugin to either remove scripts and styles from a plugin or from a theme that may load it. In fact, I was working on an Avada optimization video, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, which we'll talk about in the next video, where I had to do this. And there'll be two separate videos on it because I'll be showing you one implementation of free plugins and one where you'll be doing paid. But Asset Cleanup is a very complex plugin, and it's honestly not my favorite. My problem with Asset Cleanup is it's become very large and outside its original scope. When you have a plugin, and it starts off as free. They have to find a way to make it premium. And this plugin has added features that I wouldn't recommend you use and therefore I don't recommend you pay for. Um, for instance, optimizing the CSS and the JS will combine and minify the files. My issue with this implementation is this isn't accompanying a page cache solution so the performance will be worse and it's something you have to keep in mind. But when you install it, you're going to get this notice about stripping the fat, which is just a warning that says, I understand how this plugin works, and I'll make sure to use the proper modes via test mode. Now that you've done that, you can go to the plugin usage preferences. With this, you can configure how the plugin actually will display on the front and back end. My personal preference is having it load on the front end, but a lot of users do prefer having it on the back end. To do this, there's a couple ways that you can modify these settings. Number one, for most implementations, I do recommend using direct instead of WP remote post. It is more performant in my general testing. And also, I recommend that you should fetch the assets on button click instead of doing it automatically. I was working on a website that had, I think they had about 60 plugins installed. It was a very large and complicated website, I will admit. And they had this plugin installed as well. And whenever they open up their admin panel to edit a post, it suffered very obvious performance degradation because they were showing the assets automatically. And they had quite a few assets. It also served, it also fired off a bunch of Ajax requests, which led to more usage of their server resources. So I highly recommend that you select it to use on button click. Also, I recommend that you don't really need to show the Assets Pro Metabox in JavaScript because we're using the free version. And you can choose to hide additional Metaboxes based on your theme and your plugin, but we are not going to do that. Basically, this would just allow you to hide all Metaboxes from public post types. If you're only optimizing a certain post type, say your page, you could hide it in every other post type, and this could yield performance gains. If you're somebody who likes to manage assets on the front ends, kind of like Perf Matters, which is my preferred plugin, you're able to show the assets on the front end, and what it will do is it will hide them in the footer, and it'll basically just be a nice little big box. It's not the best implementation. Uh, w, uh, Webcraftic has another asset manager plugin, and it has a much nicer user interface than this plugin, and Perf Matters, which is my preferred plugin, in my opinion, has the nicest user interface. But this is a very simple and good implementation if you wish to have it. But for the sake of this, we're just going to have it on the back end. The asset list and styles, you can choose to group it in various positions. Um, the default grouping is honestly just fine. It'll group it by themes, plugins, and anything that's external. And then you can choose to, when the group when it is grouped by location, you can choose to keep assets from each of the plugins in the following state, or it'll be expanded or contracted, which for some reason is locked in the pro version. One thing I do recommend is hiding the asset cleanup bar from the admin panel because everything in here is really useless. You're not able to combine and minify your CSS files, so there's not really a reason to have the clear option up here. And honestly, as it is, I'm not a fan of plugins adding top level items if they're not really necessary, especially this plugin, which is very much a set it and forget it plugin, and yet it will always occupy a main menu item in your admin panel. But you can at least disable this. And then right here, I leave it as expanded. On the asset list layout, I choose uh, contracted as well. 
and then for input fields style you could just do an enhanced iPhone style or standard style if you prefer standard HTML boxes you could just use the standard basically it's just whether you want it to look relatively standard or to have it some have it have some unique appearance it doesn't really matter you could choose to hide WordPress core files from the asset list, which includes uh, jQuery, WP Embed, Comment Reply, and Dash Icons. I actually disable this. Not because I'm disabling jQuery, but for instance, Comment Dash Reply oftentimes is loaded by themes in situations that it's not needed. Sometimes Comment Reply gets loaded on posts and pages where there's no comments, but you also get implementations where it loads on every page, even if you have comments only set to load for your posts interesting implementations by some themes you could just allow usage tracking which just gives them some extra data mm -hmm. i'm gonna leave it disabled um, you could choose to fetch assets assets caching information from either disk the database or the database and disk in most implementations it's best to do it just do it from disk especially if you're on a host that has an ssd it also could serve on your database resources it, you don't want to add any more work to the database than you have to and disk is honestly fine for most websites and you could just declare previously cached css and js older than x days we're just going to set that to the default because it doesn't matter one thing you can do is not load the plugin on certain pages which means the plugin will not trigger any of its page rules on a specific page if you have an issue particularly with woocommerce i recommend adding the checkout here as it mentions as your exclusion. I had a website fairly recently that was using this plugin and they did have an issue on their checkout where they couldn't, I think they had a PayPal gateway that wasn't firing. So just make sure you set it to exclude that page on your website. Test mode, you could just enable test mode, which when you're going through trial and error, it will only load it if you are logged in the administrator. I recommend doing this when you're setting it up initially. This way, your users, even if you're working on a, um, and if you're working on a live site, which you typically shouldn't be doing, you won't ex you won't impact the user experience of the users because the plugin will be in test mode and will only be showing its changes to you. I honestly don't recommend enabling anything in this section, uh, not because the problem with this plugin is. It's honestly better to just use something that's fully fledged for it. And it's easier to manage. Auto Optimize and WP Rocket are my preferred plugins. The only thing I want to make sure is when it says cache dynamic loaded CSS, there are some plugins. There's one that's called add custom CSS, and it will load its CSS via PHP instead of a CSS file. This will convert it and cache it locally. If you're using WordPress Rocket, it will automatically do this for you. If you are using auto optimize, it will not. So just keep that in mind whether you need to enable it or disable it. Minify JavaScript, I again don't recommend doing anything in here. And then the only thing that you can choose to enable and disable is that cache dynamically loaded JavaScript. Most themes don't have dynamically loaded JavaScript, it's the dynamic CSS that you need to be aware of. You could do CDN rewrite. Uh, again, I just recommend doing this in your caching plugin. It's honestly easier. The site-wide common unloads will allow you to easily disable certain JavaScript and CSS files from the entire site. For instance, if you're not using Gutenberg, which is also known as the block editor, you can disable this. Or a better one is to disable dash icons for non-logged in users. This is a highly good thing to do and perf matters has this and I recommend you enable it in there if you have it but the general gist is it will dq dash icons dot min dot css from the front end and as it mentions if it's about 46 kilobytes on the front end this is just a good thing to clean up because you're almost never actually using dash icons 90% of websites are just using font awesome for their icons and then, as always, you could choose to disable Gutenberg CSS if you're not using it. You can disable the Oembed JS, or more importantly, you can disable emojis. And I've never seen anybody actually use emojis. Then you'll just hit save. HTML source cleanup allows you just to remove some junk in the header. 
Um, basically, most of this functionality is also found in Perf Matters and a bunch of other plugins. You could just remove these. They won't really improve your performance any. If you want to remove all generator tags, by all means, you can do so. I don't think this option actually exists in Perf Matters, removing generator tags from common plugins. But this option and the rest of them are. So that's something to keep in mind. Local font optimization is a completely paid feature. You can't do anything in here. Google Fonts, you could choose to combine them into a single request. Again, if you have a caching plugin that can do this, auto optimize, Swift, uh, WP Rocket, and I think that's about all of the main ones that cover it. You'll want to do it in there instead just to avoid issues. You could choose to disable XML RPC. If you don't know what that is, if you're using the WordPress mobile app or you're using uh, Jetpack or you're connecting your website to WordPress.com or if you're using WooCommerce service services, you need to leave it enabled. Now there's the CSS and the JS Unloads Manager. Uh, what this does, this is what actually allows you to manage assets for various pages and to start doing some of the actual work. So I am using Avada on here as an example, and then you can choose to click the front page. What this will do is it'll take you to the front page, and then you scroll down to the bottom. Scroll down to the bottom, where are you? It's probably hidden in the screen options. Hmm. Interesting, it's not loading at all. Good stuff. Let's go to an example post real quick and edit one of them. The standard hello world post. It should just appear as a meta box in the footer. All right, since it's not rendering, we're gonna go ahead and double check our settings to make sure we didn't disable it for the entire site, which is a very real possibility. Oh. I disabled the asset manager box. That it was not a very good thing to do. Let's now reload. Ah, here it is, the asset manager, CSS and JavaScript manager. One thing to keep in mind is that the settings say to hide the pro version. It is actually not the pro version. And you could choose to hide the CSS uh, options meta box, but that's not really important. And there we go. After clicking the button, it now gives you a giant menu, which looks a little intimidating. And quite honestly, it is. Um, this is an absurd amount of assets to manage. And this is just a pay. This is a single post. Part of the thing is Avada does load its JS in a very inefficient manner, which I will be talking about in another video. But what I can recommend is you can see plugins that you know you're not going to be using. So you open up your page in your post and you see, OK, it's Hello World. Uh, it's got a WooCommerce widget. It's got some contacts and stuff right here and looks like a sidebar Maybe was here But what we know we need to do is unload contact form 7. It is not needed on the post type On all pages of post of the post type post type unload What that does now is it will not load contact form 7 JS on the post type of post one thing that is beneficial about this plugin is um it has some additional configuration options you don't see in something like Perf Matters, but on the flip side, we have some Contact Form 7 CSS, but there is no Contact Form 7 JS. This is from the Avada theme. All in all, it's a very simple and straightforward plugin. You go ahead, you install it, you'll be able to DQ and bulk unload assets. If you're curious, you'll go to the CSS in JS Manager, what this does over here is it will list out for the post type post. It will let you know if you set any unloads on a per page basis. If you have a bulk change like we just did with Contact Form 7, you go to the post and po custom post types and it lets you know that we are unloading Contact Form 7 on the post post type. And that's really all it is. Um, I will come out and say that this plugin's interface is incredibly complicated, and that's really why I have a struggle recommending it. 
Web Craftics Optimizer is another free alternative, and I do kind of recommend you use it. When this plugin first came out, it was a lot simpler, but the interface is honestly in incredibly complicated for what it is, and that's really a shame on the development standpoint. When somebody is using this plugin, they have an absurd amount of options to get through before they can finally start to unload assets. And when you get to the unload assets menu, it's huge and very complicated. And this is honestly where I think Perf Matters kind of is the cream of the crop at the moment is they have a very simple user interface. But if you do need a free alternative, I would just recommend using Web Craftics. If you're already using this, just make sure you don't fall into the pitfall of accidentally turning off the meta box and make sure that you set the meta box to be on click to reduce your server load. If you have any questions about this plugin, please feel free to ask in the comments below. The easiest thing to do to figure out if you have any issues is just to set it to test mode real quick. But otherwise, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.